You can tell the bullshit that's going on. Damn. Stop. Represent. Did I pray? Though, represent, represent, baby. In August of 2012, the dash cam of this police cruiser would capture an officer with the Louisville Metro Police Department pulling over a Honda Accord that had expired plates. Three were inside the vehicle, and upon talking to them, the officer conducting the traffic stop would quickly pick up on the nervous and anxious behavior they were giving off. A few seconds later, and the officer would hear the sound of kicking and yelling coming from inside the trunk of the vehicle. This is when the officer would call for backup and have to forcefully detain the three suspects. All the officers on scene would then cautiously open the trunk. They would find a man with a towel tied around his head and his hands- Holy shit. Fuck. Damn! And around his back. Oh my god. He probably had coronavirus. Oh. <laughs> the man inside the trunk turned out to be the owner of the vehicle. He had been working the closing shift at a Circle K gas station seven miles down the road. Once he closed up the store and started walking to his car, he would be attacked. Damn. The three suspects would then steal the man's car, but rather than leave him behind, they would tie him up and stuff him in the trunk of his own car before fleeing with it. Following the incident, the three responsible would be arrested. They were later identified as 27-year-old Trent Bly, 27-year-old Joseph Davis, and 28-year-old Brittany Elder. What they had planned to do with the victim is still unknown. Had the plates on the car not been expired, the traffic stop likely would not have even happened, and the victim would have been at the complete mercy of these people and their intentions. Other than being roughed up and moderately dehydrated from the heat of the trunk, the victim would make it out unharmed. On December 19th, 2017, the Tucson Police Department in Arizona would receive a disturbing call reporting a man who looked to be impersonating an undercover cop. The caller stated that he, along with a couple friends, had been parked on the side of the road when a man claiming to be an undercover cop pulled up next to them. He further stated they had all been searched, and one of them- You are dead! You are at, you are clock ass for that. Man. That's one, that, that's, there's many ways of getting clocked up like that, but that's one of them. Jesus. It's even put in handcuffs. I don't know what's worse, doing that or what, I wasn't it Chris Sales, YouTuber? He had like, some, was it blue light, oh shit. Was it blue lights or something? Like it was like it looked like um, red and blue lights, like you know, like a cop car, and just following people. That's, uh, that's illegal. You, I don't feel like that's illegal. I feel like you will do some time for that. Right? I don't know. like you can you can be messing with people like that. Police would verify that whoever they were with was in no way affiliated with law enforcement. Multiple police would be sent to the scene. However, when they arrived, they were informed by the group that upon calling the police, the impersonator would hastily drive off, even leaving one of the guys still in handcuffs. How's it going? You guys live here? You guys live here? What are you guys doing? Uh, you guys doing? Uh, God damn. Wow. Wow. After I found out the truth, I would have came back for him in vengeance. Days later, detectives were able to track down the identity of the impersonator, and he would quickly be arrested. With the help of a search warrant, officers were able to confiscate multiple items used during the incident. These included a white four-door sedan with built-in red and blue flashing lights, a radio earpiece, a baton, and a dash cam. Upon further inspection of the dash cam, police found that it had been recording the whole thing. Not only that, it also showed multiple other times that the impersonator had pulled over and confronted different people. Wow. 
You a whole ass dick for that. Yeah, that's definitely illegal. You can't be doing that. Yeah, if I ever find out the truth, you did that shit to me, I'm fucking you up on site. The man's motives for doing this aren't exactly clear, but the fact that he was willing to even go as far as putting people in handcuffs doesn't make them look good. One can only imagine what his true intentions were. Ultimately, he would receive charges of impersonating a law enforcement officer and kidnapping. He probably, it's probably like a sick joke. You the stash cam footage shows the response to a 911 call reporting a burning truck. The call was made in the late hours of February 11, 2017 in Glen Heights, Texas. Texas. It was reported that a truck engulfed in flames was stopped in the drive through lane of a jack-in-the-box, dangerously close to the building itself. Officer Chris Womack was the first respondent on scene. When he arrived, it was clear that the truck was to the point where it could explode at any time. Holy shit. So, thinking quick, the officer bravely used his own patrol vehicle to push the truck to where it was a safe distance from the restaurant building. Hey man, kudos to this cop right here, cause like... Just like Ch Chillin' Scale, I don't know what his, I don't know what uh, Chillin' Scale's real name is. But could, just like he said in the video, like, it could have blown up at any time. And the cop probably knew that. And just, you know, the fact that he did what he did, kudos to him, man. I hope nobody's in that truck. was able to save any damage to the building. It was also able to save any injuries from occurring, as none were ever reported. Jesus. Richard Lee McNair was a man born in 1958 in Oklahoma. When he was just 28, he was given two life sentences for murder and attempted murder during a burglary gone wrong. However, McNair is more well known for his escapes during his time in prison. McNair successfully escaped law enforcement a total of three different times. Wow. His first escape didn't last that long, only able to stay on the outside for a matter of minutes. And the second escape was a little different. Nine months out of prison as a fugitive on the run. Then, on April 5, 2006, McNair would make his third and final attempt at escaping. It was successful, but seemingly not for long. As he was running on the side of the road, a police officer would notice him. And because police were informed of an escapee at the time, the officer would stop him. Devil. You, you live around here, man? No. Where you live at? Down the road by you. Pineville? Bible? Uh-huh. Okay. Do you have any form identification on you? No, no. All right. Oh. Oh. Um, what is? We got an escapee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where from? Prison. Oh, prison here? Yeah. Huh. The whole event was caught on the police officer's dash cam, and it shows as McNair desperately fabricates information in an attempt to convince the officer he's not the escaped prisoner. What are you, what's your address? I don't have an address. I'm at the hotel. We're working on uh, houses and stuff. I got roofing. Roofing? Yep. Okay. For my brother. All right. Um, what are you saying at? That uh, Titusville or Titus Inn? Titus Inn? Little Little Where's that at? I don't even know that. We just got into town about a week ago, and he dropped me off to jog. I always jog about 12 miles a day. Where'd he drop you off at? Up there on that road by, uh, there's construction going on up there. Uh, he dropped me off. Who do y'all work for? It is, it is. You can't tell the bullshit that's going on. Damn. As soon as he started talking, I've been like, Sir, 
Oh, ugly. I know what's the name of the company. Okay. 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 Did you go through a briar patch or something? Well, yeah, roofing. I always roofing shorts and cut my uh, scratches up on, you know, the roofing. That's why your knees are all cut up. McNair's ability to quickly come up with fake information proves extremely helpful in convincing the officer he had nothing to do with the escape. However, he would make a couple mistakes. Near the beginning of their conversation, the officer asks for McNair's name. He does this once again near the end of their conversation. What's your name? Robert Jones. Robert Jones? Uh-huh. So what's your name again? Jimmy Jones. McNair gives two different fake names. Though, the officer doesn't catch this, and in the end, actually lets McNair go thinking he's just a jogger. When I crossed the tracks down there, I saw you running, I said, well, how lucky can I be? <laughs> Uh -huh. No, 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 no. I'm not no prison escape. I'm sorry to have to hold you up. But... All right. No, I'm just doing my job, man. I know you are. But, uh, yeah, just be careful. You'll probably get stopped again, okay? Don't, don't. Don't, don't. Yeah, they definitely in the South. Don't, don't. <laughs> oh, ugly. I'm the type of person that, like, I notice a lot of shit, you know? I don't, I don't necessarily say a whole lot. I'm a little quiet. But I noticed a whole lot of shit. So, that being said, when he told me two different names, bring that ass here. Come on. Time to do life. And I'm going to watch your ass. Be a long bite. All right. That's hey. our quick line there. Have a good day now. Be careful, buddy. Thank you. All right. This crucial mistake would allow Richard McNair to remain free for a full year and a half after this encounter. Once he was finally discovered again by law enforcement, he would be sent to a supermax prison in Florence, Colorado, the most secure prison in all of the United States. Oh, shit. Another attempt to escape was never made by Richard Lee McNair. What is that, Robert Jones? Jim this police dash cam footage comes from a California Highway Patrol vehicle. The two officers inside were responding to a reported structure fire when a large mudslide is quickly revealed on the road. But once it's noticed, it's too late. There wasn't enough time for the driver to react. Therefore, the patrol vehicle is sent directly into it. All four wheels are quickly elevated off the ground, Jesus. spinning the vehicle around and forcing it with the current of the mudslide. That's why you need your high beams on. I would have noticed that shit. Tell me. Water slide. Luckily, ahead. by some miracle, the officers were able to regain traction and drive ahead of the slide. By that point, there wasn't much they could do but warn pedestrians and watch the disturbing sight of the mudslide rushing down the road and tearing through their city. Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! Go! Go! Yo, that's scary as shit. To 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 have law enforcement just tell you without no context. Go! Get out of here! Go! Go! Run! Run! Get out of here! Go! Nigga, you <laughs> what you talk about? Hell no! Nah. Hell no! Nah. <laughs> Right through us. What are you supposed to do? I have no idea. Ventura 29 there is a, a very active mudslide coming down Olive Mill towards the 101 right now. Uh, it overtook our vehicle as we were heading north on Olive Mill. We were able to barely escape and we're down by the freeway now. But it's uh, there's a lot of debris and a lot of flow coming down. It should be on that uh, near the freeway very shortly. Mike, get in the car. Mike, get in the car. Get in the car, Mike. Get in the car. Get in the car. Mike, 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 get in the car, Mike. Mike, 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 M
Mike Wazowski. <laughs> in the early morning hours of July 27th, 2018, police in Wyoming received multiple calls reporting a reckless wrong way driver on the highway. Officers Rob Meredith and Chris DeBoer were the first on scene. In order to stop the driver, the officers were forced to use their own police cruiser as a makeshift barricade, which was all caught on their dash cam. Take as many lanes as you can. Watch yourself, watch yourself. Is that him? We are going to set up like this. He's coming right at us right now. All right, we got him coming at us, dispatch. Oh, shit. As the two set up, the headlights of the wrong way driver can be seen quickly approaching. Disturbingly, they're showing no signs of slowing down or even diverting their vehicle's path to avoid a head-on collision. Oh my god. The quick reaction of Officer Chris DeBoer to turn the cruiser into the impact was the only thing saving the vehicles from a head-on collision and a most likely fatal situation. The wrong way driver later stopped further down the road and was taken to the hospital for treatment of injuries. He was a 60-year-old man and was charged with his third offense of operating a vehicle while intoxicated. As for the two police officers, they were lucky enough to make it out of the incident with only minor injuries. Damn. She, I thought it was like, like a, like a seizure or something. God damn. You a... Yeah, you doing time. You doing time. I forgot he ends it like that. Oh, shit. Hell no. Nah. This one right here. You doing time, my boy. You doing time. Get the hell out of here. That must... This one, too? Jesus. There's some brave police out there. This one, you a ass. You, you a cluck ass for that one. He told you two different names. Two different names. And you missed that shit? Give me your badge. Keep it cool. Keep it classy. And I love you. Stay happy. My family.